In this video, I'm going to walk you through a governance risk and compliance project where we actually implement and then write a statement for an account management control. By the end of this video, you're going to understand exactly how to set up an identity access management control user account in AWS. You're gonna understand least privilege. You're gonna understand password policies and multi-factor authentication and even generate content for a cybersecurity plan. You can definitely follow along. You'll just need a free AWS account. If you're new to my channel, I'm Nicole. I currently work within governance, risk, and compliance. If you're interested in a governance, risk, and compliance career, I do have free training below that will walk you through every single step of the way. In this section, what we're going to do is we're going to go over several controls and we're going to start with account management or AC2. Now this can be found in the FedRAMP SSP high baseline. But basically, when you're implementing and you are a GRC analyst, a cybersecurity manager, cybersecurity officer, you really need to understand how to read the controls and then also go into a variety of environments and then figure out if they're meeting that control. And this means you have to have a good grasp of how to read and then also how to apply it to different environments. If you read this control, it's just giving you guidelines to follow. And so this is going to be different in AWS. It's going to be different in Azure. It's going to be different on premise or an active directory. Here we're just using AWS. So that's what we're going to do. But this is about establishing and managing the user account securely, ensuring only authorized individuals can access the system. And then FedRAMP requires organizations to create, enable, modify, and remove accounts as needed, and to regularly review accounts to prevent unauthorized access. So in practice, this means utilizing AWS identity access management to create those user unique identities, enforcing those least privileges, and disabling accounts when people leave or no longer need access. So what we're going to do is basically this is the clinics cloud needs user accounts for each team member who manages the open MRS system on AWS. And so we're going to create an account for Alice, who is the IT administrator and manages the AWS resources for open MRS. We're going to do one for Bob, a developer who needs the limited access. And we're also going to do one for Carol, this is a security officer who will review the logs and will also set an identity access management or IAM password policy and discuss multi-factor authentication or MFA. So by the end of the lab, you're gonna have a clear structure of this and how it applies to a technical setting for user account control. And as you can see this control, because this is high, you have to meet every single one of these perimeters and then you have to write out for each part on how this environment matches in AWS. You also have to see, is this implemented, partially implemented, planned, applicable from the previous lab? Is this inherited from the service provider? Is this configured by you? Is this a shared service where it's both AWS or is this inherited from another FedRAMP authorization? Now that you understand the scenario, let's get straight into actually creating these users. So then we're in compliance with this AC2 account management control. What you're going to want to do is on that AWS free tier, you're going to want to go up here and you're going to want to search for identity access management. And then you're gonna to go to IAM right here. And now here, what we're going to do is we're going to create Alice, which is an admin because she is the IT admin. So we're going to go to users right here. We're going to first create user. And now we're going to just type in Alice. And then we have to set the permissions. So what you're usually going to do is you can add it to a group. So this is an existing group with already permissions. You can attach policies directly. That is not best prep because it becomes really hard to manage administratively or you can also copy permissions from a group but just remember 
That person, if you change the group, it, their permissions aren't going to change, and most likely this person will be forgotten about. You really don't want to attach policies directly unless it's really well documented and for a good use case. So we're going to put add user to group, and then we also we need to create the group. So what we're going to do is we just click that, that create group. Now for user group name, we're just going to name it admin. And now here are all the permissions that you can give, right? This is a 1038. It's a lot of permissions. And so this can get a little crazy. You don't want to give everyone all of the permissions because then that's like the king to the kingdom. They could just delete your entire business if they get angry at you. But what we're going to do is we're just going to give them administrative access. So you just click this right here. And then you just press uh, this place. And then just make sure then that is checked right here. Now we're just going to create user group. And now as you can see, she's in admin. Those attached policies are there. Now we're just going to click next. All right, and so now as you can see, now we're just going to create user. So now we have Alice. You can also tag them, so you could add a tag if you really wanted to. You can just play around with this, add new tag. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add Bob, and Bob is a developer. So we're just going to go back to users. We're going to create a user. We're going to name them Bob. And now we're just going to click next. Now for permissions, we're not going to give Bob full access because he doesn't need that. So we're going to apply the least privilege. So instead of the admin group here, we're going to just create a new group called developers. So just create a new group. And now we're just going to name this developers. And again, that's the least privilege because he doesn't need all of this. And so, Basically, for Bob to do his job, he's just managing the application servers and perhaps databases, but not really sensitive security settings. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to type this. We're going to type in Amazon EC2 full access. So there you go. We're just going to check this. And also, go, looking back at that architecture, there was also an RDS. So we're just going to also check that. And this is going to let him work with those database instances when he needs. And this also gives him access to just those, but not like an organization-wide setting. So Bob can do his job and he can't mess with those sensitive configurations. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an identity access management user for Carol. And Carol is going to be the security office auditor. So now we're going to create a new user and this is going to be named Carol, who is the auditor. So we're just named, now we're going to want to give her new permissions. So we're going to create a new group and then we're going to name this security audit. So you might just have this and you might delete her after she's done auditing or when she leaves. And here, she just needs read only because she's not going to be changing anything. She's just auditing. And I think there might be an auditor group. No, there is. Okay, so just type in audit. And then here you go. There's a security audit. So this security template grants access just for read only for cloud trail logs, config, identity access, management settings, and all of that. So then we're just going to create that user group right there. And now she can read all of those things, but then she can't change anything. And now we're just going to click next, create user. And this is so important because each user only has the permissions needed for their role. So we have an admin, we have a developer, we have an auditor. And this enforces least privilege and separation of duties, core principles of secure account management. If we go back and we read these FedRAMP thing this fed ramp we just established the conditions for a group and role membership we identified and selected different types of information to mission functions we did assign account managers for information system accounts we have an admin and now we are going to create an identity access management password policy 
account wide. So FedRAMP requires strong password controls, and AWS lets you set an account wide password policy. And as you can see, it says organizational defined procedure or condition. That just means of the entire organization. And then you inherit those controls from the organization. All right. So for that, we're going to go back to AWS. All right. So within identity access management, we need to click identity access management password policy. And so how we're going to do that is on the side here, we're going to go to account settings. And here you can set a custom password policy. So you can just go to edit here and then you can set the minimum length to 12 characters for the password strength. You can require at least one uppercase letter. Maybe you want to turn on a password expiration. That is a control where they actually have to change it every 295 days. You do basically anything that you want and then create a policy around that. So you can just save changes right here and then you can set the custom. And so basically now you have that password organizational wide um, policy. Now, the next thing is you can enable MFA for privileged users, and this adds an extra layer of security. So FedRAMP High recommends and mandates MFA for privileged accounts. And often for all user accounts assessing management interfaces. So in AWS, you can enable this by going to the security credentials. And you can do that by actually going to the user. And then you go to that person. And now you go to security credentials. And now here you can actually enable that multi-factor authentication. And then because I'm not going to go through this, but this is basically what you would do for that. And then you could assign and you could choose like a, maybe you have an authenticator app, maybe you have a pass key, maybe you have a hardware key, but that's basically what you would do for that. One of the major parts of identity access management includes reviewing accounts and also disabling and deleting different types of accounts that are no longer needed. And so if we go back to users, maybe Bob is going to leave, we must remove his access right when he wants to leave. A simple way is to delete the IAM user. And basically what we would do is we would just go to the user and then click on Bob and then we just click delete. And then to confirm, we just type in Bob and then we delete the user. Now in the real world, you're going to have a bunch of change management requests before doing that. You don't just want to do that without telling somebody that would be really bad. So this demonstrates how we can enforce those ex-employees no longer have access to the system and then we would pass this along to the security manager to make sure that you actually did that. So in this lab, we created individual user identity access managements for each person sharing account. Now every action in AWS will now be tied to a specific user's identity, which is crucial for auditing and traceability. We also assign permissions based on role, implementing least privilege principle, and this directly supports FedRAMP's AC family objectives for preventing unauthorized access and minimizing potential damage from any single account. The AC2 also calls for automation and timely management of accounts and by enforcing, but we're not going to go too deep into that unless you want me to just post in the chat room and I can get back to you. But basically, by enforcing a strong password policy and MFA, you, we can address the authentication requirements. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to create a sample SSP statement. What I'm going to do is I am just going to create a new document and I'm going to write out a SSP statement. So Something that we could write for this is to meet that control is the open MRS health cloud system enforces account management by utilizing identity and access management. Unique IAM user accounts are created for each administrator, developer, and security team member requiring access to the AWS environment. Users are assigned to role 
based groups with least privilege access policies. For example, only designated traders have full AWS access with, there we go, while developer have limited EC2 RDS management rights and auditors have read only permissions. Account creation and modifications are approved by the system owner and accounts are promptly deactivated or deleted when personnel leave or no longer need access. We did that. AWIAM is configured with a strong password policy and MFA is required for privileged users in accordance with FedRAMP. My spelling is really bad, so forgive me. So this approach ensures that only authorized individuals can access system resource activity are attributed to users satisfying AC-2. So it would go something like this, and then you would put that in your SSP. Yeah. And so if you want to do, so what I suggest is I would go through this and then I would write down for each parameter what you think it would be. So if, so what do you think this would be in accordance to each one of these? So I gave you the answer, but not really. So I gave you most of the answer, but really read each letter and figure out what's going on there. All right. And then let me know if you want me to go over any more controls in the AC family. And I will see you later. So that is the end of the implementing AC2 control. If you are wanting to explore more intimately governance, risk, and compliance, I do have a 100-day governance, risk, and compliance course below that walks you from the beginning of GRC to diving deep into a specific framework during this course, we actually do a capstone where I show you how to apply what you've learned in a real world setting. This can be done 30 minutes a day during your lunch break. This you don't have to study hours upon hours and it can be completed within 12 weeks. So you can check that out below. All right. Goodbye.